Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, you're welcome to subscribe, like and share. And today I thought I would elaborate a bit on Andrew Holness's accomplishments for Jamaica for the year 2019. I was listening to him and, you know, I know he said he'll do it in two to four minutes, which he did, and it was fantastic, the number of accomplishments that they've made throughout 2019 but there was a lot of acronyms and he was speaking so fast and I wasn't sure quite how to link it with what was going on. So what I did I went through them one by one and I decided to elaborate on them for other people who wanted to know a bit more about the accomplishments. So I'm gonna to have to read it because um, like I said I was taking it from him and I just elaborated a little bit on it. So uh, the first thing um, was the lowest unemployment rate um, in the history of Jamaica, which is 7.8%. That is calculated by measuring the number of people actively looking for a job as a percentage of the labour force. So that doesn't mean that the people have actually got a job. It just means that they are looking whereas they may not have been looking before. And that's how that is re represented. Now, this is going to be a rather long video. So it's one of those where you might want to kick back um, and just listen. OK, the longest period of consecutive growth in its history, which is 19 quarters. So after decades of high debt and low growth, it has turned it around to positive economic growth. As, and you might say to yourself, well, how come there's all this economic growth if they, if they owe so much to China? And they actually owe 79 billion US dollars. Yeah, I think it's US dollars, 79 billion. But the weird thing is in economics is that the more you borrow, the more healthier you are as a country. And as you know, I think America is 223 trillion or whatever it is. It's absolutely, it's trillion or billion, I don't know. It's a hell of a lot. And they're considered to have good economic growth. So there's something about borrowing that I don't understand that allows a country to be applauded for economic growth. And I think it's about investing and with the hope of getting money back out of it. Um, record fall in her debt to GDP ratio at 93%, record low inflation. Uh, they introduced a special procurement incentives for medium and small businesses. Now, what does that mean? It means more incentives for local suppliers whose annual turnover is below 425 million Jamaican dollars. This means that a national bidder can now earn a government contract even if its bid price exceeds the bid of a foreign bidder, provided the national bidder demonstrates a required percentage of the domestic content. Well, I hope that makes sense to you. Is a bit highfalutin, but I think what they're saying is that local and small businesses have as much as a chance as national businesses. They removed the minimum business tax um, on April 2019. The minister announced the abolishment of the minimum business tax. Previously, it was $60,000 a year, and it was broken into two parts in June and September. And businesses, all kinds of businesses had to pay that. And the taxman would be running them down for it if they hadn't paid for it. So that's been abolished. And it applied to all companies and corporate bodies incorporated or registered in Jamaica, including overseas companies doing business in Jamaica and self-employed persons. I mean, that is a lot of money to fork out, isn't it? Even dormant companies and companies who were exempted from income tax were required to pay the MBT. It was implemented in April 2014 and signed into law on June 2015. New companies, registered charities, international organisations subject to the Diplomatic Immunities and Privileges Act with gross revenue under five million Jamaican dollars were exempt from paying. So this business tax was to be paid annually in two instalments on the 15th of June and 15th of September and the tax administration was hot on your trail if it hadn't been paid. Um, and I'm sure there are many businesses, especially self-employed, who are relieved that that's been abolished. 
um, they've reduced the transfer tax from 5% to 2%. Um, transfer tax is paid by the purchaser to the commissioner of stamp duty when a property is transferred by the seller. And I think it's the purchaser who somehow absorbs it and through the sale price gets it back or something like that. Reduced stamp duty. There's a 1.5 million income, income tax threshold for all workers resulting in 10,000 Jamaican dollars in in monthly savings. And I think that's a bit like what they do here. You know, we have a personal tax allowance and when they up it, it means that you, you don't have to pay so much tax. I mean, it means you've got more income that you can play around with before they tax you. So I think that's a similar thing. Um, they successfully completed the International Monetary Fund Programme on the 4th of November 2019. IMF said Jamaican authorities have demonstrated an exemplary commitment to reforms under two consecutive IMF-supported programmes that have spanned at least six to five years. So that means that they've been paying on time, they've been doing what they need to do. Um, better cancer care with new radiation facilities, a new um, 860 Jamaican dollars, million, 860 million Jamaican dollars, which is equivalent to 15 million US dollars, um, for the Linear Cancer Treatment Centre, which opened in Kingston in St. Joseph's Hospital, um, and was the second one. The first facility was located in Cornwall Regional Hospital in Montego Bay. They've also got the reducing waiting time at drugs and pharmacy counters. Apparently, since the National Health Fund took over public sector, pharmacies under the name DrugServe um, have significantly reduced the waiting time um, from three to four hours to 20 minutes, and in some cases an hour. But that is a drastic reduction. However, the unavailability of drugs seems to be an issue, and where they are saving waiting time saving waiting time in one respect they're finding that they're having to visit different pharmacies to get the medication they need so it's like they're saving time but then because if they don't have the product the time that they're taking looking for pharmacy who does kind of means that they're adding that time back um, the ministry of national security invests us dollars 47 million in border security um, this is including five years spares and support package, ground equipment and tools. So that's in the 47 million US dollars. And it's in the form of six helicopters. Three are the new Bell 429 long range surveillance helicopters for passenger troops and medical evacuation. One is a 412 EP helicopter to deal with heavy cargo and troop transfer. There are two being used for there were two Yell used helicopters, um, the Bell 206B3, and they'll be used for training. And then they, you've got four DS-40CS aeroplanes at a cost of 1.5 million. These will replace the current JDF helicopter fleet, which was about over 20 years old. So you've got some new equipment there. You've also got the new Beechcraft King Air 350 Maritime Patrol Aircraft for the Jamaican Defence Force. And that's to be used for search and rescue, customer and fisheries patrol and law enforcement. Under the American Dollars 30 million contract, Thales will supply the Jamaican Defence Force a, a turnkey system built around several Thales Coaster Watch 100 surveillance systems. It's a new radar system in a nutshell. Um, Electro-optical sensors, the Global Maritime Distress and Safety System radios. The ra radar can also detect surface and air targets ranging from inflatable dinghies to warships, helicopter and aircrafts in low-level flight. It will also deliver a national control centre that will, produce, that will process data from radars and sensors to, to provide operational capacity to the Jamaica Defence Fund. Sounds like people are planning for war, doesn't it? Um, they've doubled the security budget. Um, adult Jamaicans can renew their passports online from anywhere in the world. 
The Passport Immigration and Citizen Agency, PICA, advises that to use the online passport renewal application process, customers need to log into the agency's website at www.pica.gov.jm and can begin the process from any location 24 hours a day. You will need a valid credit card, working email address and a PDF reader. PDF reader is one of those that you can, you know, most of the stuff, the documents we have are on PDF. So I'm assuming you know what a PDF is. Um, and that's to receive the system generated messages. Minors, first time adult applicants or adults who are minors, when they obtained their last passports cannot apply online for obvious reasons. Persons in possession of a non-machine readable passport issued prior to September 2001 cannot renew online. So it has to be the new machine readable ones that you're trying to renew. Um, there's going to be 18 new motorcycles for police valued at 100 Jamaican dollars, 100 million Jamaican dollars. Uh, the government is also hoping to rehabilitate all 186 police stations and build some additional ones within the next two years. Fully equipped cars and bikes will ensure public safety. And then we have the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, PSTEB, of police, who are wearing bright yellow, you know, that luminous yellow, neon yellow uniforms and their bikes to match. And they're using, um, and this is for high visibility to discourage lawbreakers from committing offences. Major investment in forensic and DNA. There's new ballistics machines are being operated from the Institute of Forensic Science and Legal Medicine. A newly constructed two-storey extension of the Institute's main building is equipped with CCTV cameras, air conditioning units, access control and fire suppression system will house a national DNA database and provide more of office space. It is hoped to be used to prosecute offenders and exonerate the innocent. And it's Jamaica's first DNA database. So they're getting in there, boy. Um, record tourist arrivals. Approximately 4.5 million tourists arrived in Jamaica in 2019 and which recorded earnings from tourism in the sum of US dollars, 3.88 million. Um, 250 Jamaican, 215, 250 million Jamaica dollars to launch the Tourism Workers Pension Fund, which is quite good for anybody working in the tourism industry. And this is for Caribbeans who are self-employed in the tourism sector and with a retirement savings account that will be portable across places of employment within the tourism sector. If workers have contributed for only five years and reach their retirement age of 65, they will get a guaranteed minimum pension. I'm sure they'll be glad about that. The Tourism Workers' Pension Scheme is designed to cover all workers aged between 18 and 59, or 18 to 59, working in the tourism sector, whether permanent, contract or self-employed. This includes hotel workers as well as persons employed in other tourism subsectors, such as craft vendors, tour operators, red cap porters, contract carriage operators and workers at, attraction, at attractions. That's really good that they got a special pension for that. And they've also launched the Drive Safe app, allowing for citizens to report misdemeanors and negligent driving habits to make Jamaica roads safer. Jamaica Gleaner reported that more than 400 unruly drivers have been reported on the Drive Safe app. So somebody's been snapping away, uploading the, the misdemeanors and sending it off. I don't know what the outcome is. Um, it was launched on the 17th of December, but which was made available through Google. Play Store on the 5th of June. Now, I don't know if these 400 are from June, even though it was launched on the 17th of December. I doubt very much if 400 in just two to three weeks. That sounds a bit much, doesn't it? So I'm hoping it's since June. Anyway, 
A couple of um, Jamaica has commissioned two air traffic control towers at Sangster Airport and Norman Manley Airports. The tower at Sangster Airport cost 2.7 billion Jamaican dollars and was built by a Canadian firm Intelcan Technosystems. They've also implemented Wi-Fi on buses. The Jamaica Urban Transit Company has signed a major partnership deal with Growth Tech Limited for the provision of Wi-Fi connected connectivity on 400 of its buses um, the technology will allow up to five up to 100 devices per bus to access 4g service at any time so now when you're on the bus you should have wi-fi um, 31,513 mobile free wi-fi hotspots across major towns including 16 K in Kingston, 1K in Spanish Town, 1K in Portmore, 1K in Montego Bay, 1K in Mandeville and Maypen, and four more towns are set to receive free Wi-Fi hotspots by the end of 2021. So that's useful. Um, Jamaica's commissioned the largest solar plant in English-speaking Caribbean in Paradise Park Solar Farm. Um, it, it solar far, the Paradise Park Solar Farm is the largest solar farm in the English-speaking Caribbean. The project was initiated by Jamaican of the Eight Rivers Energy Company, who partnered with Neonin, and energy company from France, an energy company from France. Electricity produced by this 20 megawatt plan is the largest of its kind in the Caribbean. It will supply clean power to Jamaica, to Jamaica's power grid for 85 Jamaican dollars per MWH for a period of 20 years. Now that sounds quite very, very reasonable. Uh, a new 194 megawatt JPG LNG plant in Old Harbour. The completion of the new Fortress Energy Plant, which is an American company, firmly roots Jamaica in the liquefied national gas industry. That's what LNG stands for. At a cost of around American dollars, 86 million, it is alleged that as of December 2019, it was producing 5,000 gallons a day and it is anticipated that the Old Harbour Terminal will produce 744,000 gallons per day by March 2020. Ah, so um, Jamaica has just completed the pilot programme for liqu liquefied natural gas on five buses at a cost of 400 million Jamaican dollars. Invested by the new Fortress Energy in a new partnership with Jamaica's urban transit company, JUTC, for the introduction of the first natural gas powered buses in Jamaica, which will significantly reduce emissions. Um, Jamaica's boasted 400 roads have been resurfaced or rehabilitated the Mandela, well, I'm just going to say a few of them, Mandela Highway, Marcus Garvey Drive, Maxfield, Barbican, Coxton String and more. The Junction Road and South Camp Road are being repaired, South Coast Highway from Harperview to Port Antonio, extending the East West Highway from Maypen to Williamsfield. So those are the anticipated um, upgrades um, that have already started or, you know, under construction. Over 12 major bridges have been repaired or are under construction. Morant Bay Town Centre is planned to start. Um, there are over 50 water facilities have been rehabilitated island-wide. Major upgrades and placement of water and sewer mains within the corporate area. Reduce National Water Commission water, water losses from 60% to 40% in the corporate area. So... 60% um, to 40% to under 50%, that's pretty good, you know, in, in preserving the water. Um, Jamaican, 800 million Jamaican dollars investment in rural water, which brought water to thousands of Jamaicans who never had water because of severe drought conditions and significant reduction in NWC's inflow. NWC is the National Water Commission. 
in certain parishes, including Clarendon, St Elizabeth and St Mary, causing a drastic decline in the availability of water. Because when um, when Andrew Holness was saying, you know, they're investing in water because thousands of Jamaica never had water, you know, to somebody who is outside the country, they're like, what? They ain't got water? How come Jamaica hasn't got water? But when you understand it's because of the drought and, you know, what um, is happening with NWC, it kind of makes sense. So, you know, I felt as though I needed to clarify that bit. It's not like, you know, they don't have water and there's all, you know, they're that poor and all that. It's because of droughts and weather conditions, natural, um, not natural disasters, disasters, but natural conditions. Um, 27,000 new housing project between the Neighbourhood Housing Development, NHD, and the Housing Agency of Jamaica, HAJ. HAJ um, is a land and housing development company that provides shelter solutions for Jamaicans island-wide. They are slated to build 1,650 studio and one bedroom homes in St Catherine and a joint venture partnership with China Harbour Engineering Company Limited at a cost of 9.5 billion Jamaican dollars. Offices are based in Kingston and Montego Bay. I've got a pen here. Um, you'll remember that um, Andrew Holness, his honourable Andrew Holness, also mentioned 16 fire trucks. Eight of them are brand new at the cost of 400 million Jamaican dollars. Um, they also mentioned 100 new garbage trucks and they're being provided by the National Solid Waste Management Authority. Up from 57 that he quoted at the end of his end of year speech, um, being the 43 new trucks over the last three years. Uh, successfully completed the tyre removal pilot project, that was quite intriguing, um, to be disposed of in an environment friendly and sustainable manner from Riverton City and will shortly roll out the full project. Um, this project was to remove over 2 million tyres that were stockpiled at Riverton City disposal site in Kingston. This will be completed in collaboration with the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation, the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development and the National Solid Waste Management Authority. Nearly through it. I mean, it is quite a lot, isn't it? But these are the achievements and accomplishments. So I think it's important to kind of elaborate a little bit. Um, over 1,000 tyres were being deposited at the site each day. So that's going to be stopped. <coughs> Jamaica paid off Sorry, nine billion Jamaican dollars streetlight <coughs> streetlight debt to Jamaica Public Service, which dated back several years. The rear stood in the way of residents getting defective lights repaired and new ones installed. As a result, the JPS committed to repairing twelve thousand malfunctioning streetlights. So hopefully Jamaica will be lighter and brighter. Um, Single-use plastics have been banned. I'm not going to elaborate on that. No, 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 no more scandal bug. And um, planted three million trees. That's good for oxygen. Um, use of styrofoam has been banned to reduce the impact plastic has on the environment. Before the ban, Jamaica was known to have one of the largest per capita or highest per capita users of plastic bags in the world with an average person using 500 plastic bags a year, according to Forbes. And you can understand that because with plastic bags, you put everything in a plastic bag, don't you? And I remember when I went to Jamaica, you know, whether it was the mangoes, whatever it was, everything goes into a plastic bag. So I can understand how they could use 500 plastic bags in a year. I don't know what they're going to use to replace them. Maybe paper bags. I don't know. Let me know what they're using instead of plastic bags to put all people shopping in. And instead of scandal bugs, what are they using? Okay, um, Jamaica is now becoming a global leader in climate change because of everything that's going on. 7% of Jamaica is now protected, including the cockpit country. I'm glad that petitioning paid off. Remember they were gonna do all that mining. So that looks like it's now protected. I know it was protected before, but it looks like something else has been instituted to make it formally protected. So hopefully nobody ain't going to be digging that up. 
um, improved school feeding from three to five days, Jamaica is said to adopt the Brazilian model to strengthen national school feeding program, which is also being rolled out in St. Lucia, Antigua and Barbuda. They will be improving the nutritional content of the meals. In 2018, Restaurant of Jamaica provided 4.5 million Jamaican dollars to supply an additional 1,500 meals for students. It found that the alleviation of hunger was one of the mechanisms by which school feeding improves academic achievement and undernourished children were more likely to benefit from school feeding programs than those who were adequately nourished. Yeah, because if you're if you're barely hungry, how are you supposed to concentrate? Okay, so three hundred forty-seven million Jamaican dollars has been allocated to facilitate the expansion of the school feeding program for PATH beneficiaries at early childhood level. PATH is the program of advancement through health and education. Um, there's also comprehensive increased benefits under the PATH by sixteen percent. In the past, PATH has helped transform 300,000 Jamaicans who will see an average of 16% increase in their cash grants. PATH offers an array of benefits to eligible children from birth to completion of secondary school, senior citizens of 60 years and over who are not in receipt of a pension, persons with disabilities, pregnant and lactating women, and poor adults aged between 18 and 54 through funding. PATH is a social intervention initiative which benefits the needy and most vulnerable by delivering cash grants. I was trying to think of what the equivalent was here. The only thing I can think of the equivalent is our, like our National Health Service, but this is like, an, or you know, maybe some of the charities, but charities don't give out cash money. So I can only think it's equivalent to our Universal Credit or our um, National Health Service, but even then, this looks really like a good program. Yeah, it's a really good program. Uh, increased maintenance grant of 150,000 Jamaican dollars for each secondary level schools, and it has outlawed mandatory school fees. I bet that's a relief for a lot of poor, um, poor parents. 269 school, school canteens have been upgraded. Um, successful launch of the Primary Exit Programme, PEP. The Primary Exit Programme is a series of assessments that will replace the existing Grade 6 Achievement Test, the GSAT, and is considered to be more holistic way to determine a child's readiness to exit the primary education system and enters high school by assessing their academic and critical thinking capabilities. Um, certified, um, Jamaica certified over 100 early childhood institutions, which is seen as a way of ensuring that a high standard is maintained throughout the entire educational system. Um, Jamaica's minimum wage um, to, is to be increased. The national, minimum the national minimum wage was increased in June 2018 by 12.9% for a 40 hour week. That's an incredible increased hours hours in the uk i think um this year it increased to 3.9 percent i mean that's a whopping 12.9 percent that's a lot and um, consultations um to increase it is started in november 2019 so i don't know what the outcome of that is Increased national insurance scheme benefit to pensioners. The NIS, similar to our national health insurance in the UK, covers old age, survivors of death of a spouse, disability insurance, crash, sickness and maternity and health care for pensioners and work injury programmes. This is similar to our universal credit, but Jamaica seems much more generous and less discriminatory. In 2018, the NIS was increased from 2,000 Jamaica, 2,800 Jamaican dollars to 3,400 Jamaican dollars per week. That's an incredible increase and may well be increased by 20% in the next round of consultations. That's not definite, but you know, that's the figure I saw being banded around, but it's not guaranteed. Okay. Um, there's going to be an increase in overseas employment figures. There is an increase in overseas employment figures. 16,681 Jamaicans 
participated in the Overseas Employment Plan in USA and Canada in 2018, but those figures of course were reflected in 2019. Three shelters are being prepared for abused women, that's brilliant. Sexual harassment bill tabled in July 2019 to address concerns about sexual harass harassment in the workplace and between landlord and tenant. Can you imagine? I can imagine that landlord and tenant thing because you're so vulnerable. You know, if, you, if you're behind on your rent or, you know, you're a single woman, you've got this landlord harassing you. I mean, that must be awful. So, yeah, so the sexual harassment bill is being tabled. I don't know what the outcome of that is, but when anybody knows it, let me know. Um, Entertainment Zone in Montego Bay is being renovated. <clears throat> it is alleged that a 1.2 billion Jamaican dollars is being spent on it. It is to become the most iconic entertainment centre in the Caribbean. Fort Rocky in Port Royal was Jamaica's first entertainment zone. Reggae has been inscribed on the UNESCO's intangible cultural heritage list for humanity. It is said that while in its embryonic state, reggae music was the voice of the marginalised, the music is now played and embraced by a wide cross-section of society, including various genders, ethnic and religious groups, and has contributed to international discourse on issues of injustice, resistance, love and humanity, which underscores the dynamics of the element as being at one cere cere cerebral, socio-political, sensual and spiritual. The music continues to be the voice for all. That's heavy going. I mean, it's a bit complicated worded. It's comp you know, the wording is a bit complicated or convoluted, but sounds good. Um, the Blue and John Crow Mountains are now UNESCO's World Heritage Sites. They cover 4.5% of Jamaica's land service and includes Jamaica's highest point, the Blue Mountain Peak, which is 7,402 feet high which is 2,256 metres. This UNESCO site also contains 10 of the island's 26 watershed units. There's going to be the expansion of the port of Kingston, a new cruise ship terminal with the installation of a floating pier system at Port Royal called Seawalk. Uh, port Royal's town development has begun. Nearly, nearly finished. I think I've got, yeah, just over a page left. There's the merge of the Heart Trust, National Youth Service, Apprenticeship Board and, and Jamaica's Foundation for Lifelong Learning, JFLL, to create a comprehensive and effective human cap capital development agency called the Heart Trust National Service and Trading Agency. Over 25,000 young people training through housing, opportunity production and employment programme, in brackets HOPE. Over 3,000 trained through the Jamaica National Service Corps under the Jamaica Defence Force, which is the combined military of Jamaica consisting of an infantry regiment and reserve corps, an air wing, a coast guard fleet and supporting engineering unit. The Jamaican Defence Force is based on the British model with similar organisation, training, weapons and tradition. And of course, Tony and Singh won Miss World. So um, Jamaica owes, like I said, Jamaica owes China 79 billion. And the irony is that the more a country owes, the more financially sound it is viewed to be. This figure was disclosed by the finance minister, Dr. Nigel Clark, in March 2019. And it's to be repaid in 10 years. Nigel Clark, finance and public service minister, claims it will be paid. And 99% of the loans are to be repaid to China at a fixed rate of 2 points, 2 to 3%, which is considered very low. And that, in a nutshell, is an elaboration of Andrew Holness's end of speech about Jamaica's 2019 accomplishments. Bye-bye.